If you were to ask me what is the single most important ingredient that makes yeast bun or krill bun so unique, I would have to say this, coconut milk. The addition of coconut milk to the dough makes the bread so rich. Now this is a sweet bread, but it's also spicy at the same time. This is my Aunt Eileen's recipe. She made these buns every week for over 50 years before she shared the recipe with me. Because she was already getting forgetful, when she gave us the recipe, Joe and I had to tweak it until we got it just right. So now that we've done all the hard work, let's see how simple it is to make Belizean Krill Bun. Nine and three quarters. This is a three quarter measuring cup. If you don't have a three quarter measuring cup, use a half plus a quarter, right? So that's the flour, nine and three quarters cup, four teaspoons of baking powder, and you might be one of them that will come back and say, Barbara, why are you putting baking powder in yeast buns? Because it makes it lighter. I've been doing that for like a million years. Then this is one and three quarters cup of white sugar. Again, use a one cup measurement, a half and a quarter if you don't have this type of measuring, all right? About a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of cinnamon. Put that according to what you like. One third cup of butter, softened to room temperature. And because my butter is salted, I'm not gonna add any salt, but if you're using unsalted butter, go ahead and add a teaspoon of salt. One can of coconut milk that's gonna be warmed in the microwave for about a minute. One teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm using the imitation stuff. And then we need two tablespoons of active dry yeast. If not, use two packets like this. And this come by the three pack just cut off and use two. So I buy my yeast by the pound, so I'm just gonna measure out one, two. You guys like my spoon? It was a gift given to the show by Jada, my daughter. So one cup of warm water. This is to let the yeast rise, all right? The two tablespoons of yeast, and then a teaspoon of sugar. And you can get away with stealing some of the sugar from here if you want to, but I have enough, so I'm just gonna toss this in here. Give this a stir. Let it sit here for about eight minutes thereabouts until it foams up. And then when I come back, we're gonna be actually making the bun already. It's that quick, guys. Now, of course, when Aunt Eileen used to make these buns, she would make the coconut milk from scratch, but I'm using coconut milk from the tin. She's the one that also told us that if we heat up all the wet ingredients, the buns will rise faster. So let's heat up the milk for one minute. See how it's foamy? If you do your yeast and it falls flat, throw it out and start again because you're going to mess up your buns, all right? So let's start over here. Baking powder. Sugar cinnamon and for those of you that are going to ask me where the recipe is I'm never going to write it in the description because it's too much work but here it is just pause your thingy and get it from here all right that's the what do you call the thing the extract vanilla put the butter in work this in if you would prefer to use gloves be my guest but I don't use gloves because gloves only protect the one that is actually wearing it. Doesn't protect everybody else around you. Because <laughs> when you wear gloves, you never wash your hands. Right? The yeast mixture. The coconut milk is still hot, so be very careful. From that one minute in the microwave. And we're going to need water too, all right? And I prefer to use warm water. As Josh gets some warm water from the faucet for me, I'm just going to continue adding the coconut milk a little bit at a time. Now, other Belizeans will add nutmeg to the buns. I don't cook with nutmeg because I'm allergic to it, so all I add is the cinnamon, but you can definitely add nutmeg, all right? Now, there's an option too to add raisins, but a lot of my family members don't like the raisins in the bun. So I'm still debating whether or not I'm gonna add the raisins, all right? So now all the coconut milk is all used up here. So let me see, should I or shouldn't I put the raisins in? What do you guys think? Yes, you win, I'm gonna put the raisins in. So about a cup or so. Now this amount of dough is about two and a half pounds of flour, all right? 
I want to make sure that I stay on this with the camera because I want you guys to see as I add the wet ingredients because a lot of people have told me that they have a fear about dealing with dough because they've you know maybe dealt with dough in the past and the item didn't come out right because maybe perhaps somebody just didn't give them the right recipe so I want you guys to have the right recipe and I want you guys to see exactly how wet it is see how sticky it is right here but then there's a section over here that's still dry right so I want to go ahead and add the wet here and just a little bit at a time and of course the water is warm so all this warm stuff will help to activate the yeast even more so uh, this is pretty much done as far as liquids are concerned but at some point it's gonna get hard to handle see I'm only using one hand right I'm not using my two hands because I want to have one hand free that I can you know always like stick it in there to test to see if it's too sticky but I can already tell that this is ready for the countertop so I'm just gonna have to go ahead and get my hands cleaned up before I dump this on to the countertop alright so here we go let me get the dough onto the counter let me get this little piece out the pan here and you don't have to wash the bowl okay we're gonna put the dough ball back into the bowl without washing it we don't want to do extra work so of course I'm gonna flour and knead now some people will tell you knead for five minutes knead for eight minutes knead for ten minutes I can't tell you how long you're gonna need to knead for but you do it until the dough feels smooth and it's not too sticky so now I have jewelry running camera and that's where you're going to see a bunch of dynamic angles because he has a lot of fun when he's running the camera for me. So he wants you guys to feel like you're here, all right? So let's knead. All right. See how much fun I'm having? <laughs> Ooh, I love messing with dough. I've always loved messing with dough ever since I was a little girl. So it's getting there. A little bit more flour. Look at me, like Chef Ramsay. Mm-hmm. Just roll this out. Now, this is only going to take one hour to rise. My buns or my breads never take long to rise, even in the winter months, because I heat up all my wet ingredients before I add it to the dough, so I don't have any trouble with the yeast rising or the, or the dough rising. So now we're there, guys. I just want you to see it very closely, see? So all we have to do is turn this down like this, make it into a ball as best as we can. Pretty, right? Dump it into the bowl, cover it up. Now my mother-in-law made this dish cloth for me. One hour later, look guys, voila, it's ready. It's doubled. It's matter of fact, it's kind of tripled in size. Now all I'm going to do is dump it out. We're going to re-knead. I'm getting all the dough off the bottom. This recipe is going to give us like five loaves, all right? Five decent sized loaves. Punch it. Punch it like it owes you money. No, you don't really have to punch it, but I have fun doing that. So now just knead, maybe for 30 seconds or so. Not a whole lot of kneading at this point. You want to get out all the air though, all right? And I do have a dough cutter thingy, but I'm just going to use a knife to cut the, um, the dough into five equal parts. Now, as equal as my eyes will say, all right? Because um, I don't want to use a scale to do this. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm feeling it to see which one feels heavier or bigger. And I already feel a couple of them feel kind of bigger. So I'm going to steal from one piece to give to a smaller piece. If not, you could use a scale like I have right here, but why? You know, unless you're selling the breads, right? So then I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle flour. Now this one, I'm going to make this like into a regular loaf, like for a loaf pan. So this is how you want to do this. Take the rolling pin and roll out a piece of the dough into like a rectangle. And then roll it up like you're rolling up a towel. And then I'm going to pinch the bottom shut. Tuck the ends under. And this is one loaf for a loaf pan. So my loaf pan is greased and ready to receive my loaf. Well, not greased yet. I'm greasing it now, right? Actually, I had a larger loaf pan greased and I realized the loaf was going to be too small for it. So I have to redo. 
stick it in here, then set this aside while we work on the rest. So we have four to work on. Let me show you how this is done. Put some flour. As you roll it, the bottom part will get smooth and that actually becomes the top. And then we just want to pinch the real bottom part shut like this. Just pinch it, pinch and turn, pinch and turn. Don't worry, I'll show you another one, okay? So this is one round dough ball. Now normally my Aunt Eileen will you know, take the heel of her hand and just kind of press a little dimple into it. I don't want to do it with this one because I want the pictures to come out beautiful. And that little dimple sometimes will make like a gap. All right, so let's do another one so you guys can see what I did, all right? I'm rolling the dough on the counter. So now that part becomes the top part of the bread. And then we just start pinching the bottom closed, for lack of a better term. Just pinch it. So I'm twisting and turning and just pinching it. And then I roll it off on the counter. Just kind of flatten it a little bit. And then set this on the baking sheet. And the baking sheet is, of course, greased. So the sheet can only fit like two. Two each. Now cover it up again with the beautiful dish towels that Joe's mom made. And this one is a gift from mommy. As Jory zooms in to show you that it's Belize Creole bun that we're making. Now I'm preheating the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. The buns have to be baked slow and low. Into the oven they go. I have space for this little one right here. Now here's the last tray. These will go on the bottom. And I'll set the timer for about 30 minutes, but they really need a little bit more time than that. So I would say 30 to 45 minutes. You go by how brown they are. If it's only you and your honey or you live alone and don't want to make five whole loaves of this bun, then I have the half recipe and the quarter recipe, two loaves and one loaf, in my brand new cookbook, Beans and Rice, Authentic Belizean Dishes. Be sure to pick up your copy at BearPantryShow.com. 40 minutes later and they're done. This house smells fantastic right now. You can smell the cinnamon. You can smell the vanilla. You can even smell the coconut milk and the sugar in the bun, okay? <laughs> So let me get these out. I don't want to get burned. And I pretty much take them off of the baking tray immediately and put them to cool on the wire cooling rack. But just let me set these out first so you guys can see. Here's the loaf. So get them off the tray. I don't want them to sit here and sweat and the bottoms get soggy, all right? Get these other ones off. Dump out the last one onto the tray. Let me make space for it. That's the loaf. All right, guys, in a little while, I'm going to come back and put some sugar. Well, I could do it now, but I'm not going to get the bun. I'm not going to put it on the bun yet. So a little bit of sugar in the water. And then we're going to brush this on to the buns in about, I'd say, 10 minutes or so, all right? It's time to add the sugar glaze on top of our buns. Now, I don't know who thought that these little silicone brushes would do great at glazing, but they certainly suck. So let me painstakingly try to get this done. I officially hate this stupid brush. I had to stop, do some tissue, and just dab it. So now it has a little bit of sugar water on top. I know some people that put icing sugar on top. I don't. Some people put honey. Honey changes the taste, so I don't like it. So I'm going to grab one and cut. Look, look, y'all. I have the cheese. I brought this back two years ago, all right? Two years. Joe's over there in the living room saying, bring me the back. I'm like, what is his problem? Mm -mm. See that? Isn't that gorgeous? And it's just enough raisins that if the kids don't like it, they can pick it out, all right? Now, honestly, guys, I have never had trouble with making bread. After I learned how to make it in the 1980s when my mom's aunt, Aunt Eileen, came and showed me and Joe how to do it, she told me to change some of the things uh, to make it my own. So I changed like, the amount of butter, stuff like that. And ever since then, I don't fail when it comes to making Creole bun or Creole bread. 
because it's not magic, it's science. All right, as long as you put the things the way I told you to put it, it's going to come out awesome. Now, take a look at this. See, it's a very light bun. Now, I do have a brown sugar heavy bun recipe that I will put up in the very near future, but for right now, this is the light one. I give this to anybody from any culture and they love it. All right, you want an item in your repertoire that's like that where it's not just people from your culture that like it, all right? You want it to where anybody will like it. And this curl bun is one of those items. So I hope you guys try it. Come back and tell me what you think. Show me your pictures at the page, at the Friends of Bear Pantry Show page. And remember to like, follow, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Now I'm gonna put some butter and taste. And see how nice I am? I'm not eating the back because Joe demanded. He demanded. He didn't demand, he asked. Mm, that's too much butter. So put, because I don't want to eat the whole piece. So let's taste. Mm, 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 mm. Well, the Dutch cheese is salty. And the bun is sweet. So, ooh, Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Bye, y'all. You got who train? I got your train. <laughs> <laughs>